let's look at the last thing that I haven't mentioned yet, which is the query bar. Now, the query search bar uh, supports multiple different languages, which we'll explain in a moment, as well as has some caveats that you really, really need to understand to make sure that you're successful with the logging platform. So first and foremost is Lucene. Uh, everybody knows about Lucene. It's the most common open source query language for log processing. Um, so the CoreLogix uh, processing a sort of pipeline, what happens is data is uh, ingested and then it is analyzed. So you can see here, for example, that we have um, a message associated with uh, the data. Um, and what we're doing here is you see how each one here can be uh, highlighted. This is because this whole message has been broken down into tokens. It looks like on space. Um, now, this has an implication. So, for example, if I run a message, that I run a, run a regex query against it, um, like this. If I run that against message, I don't get anything. And that's because it's been tokenized and analyzed. So, the best way, if you want to run regex queries against these kinds of field, is to add the keyword value onto the end. Now what this will do is it will um, it will run a query against the unparsed, unanalyzed version of your data. This is because all of your data has a type, so it can be a numeric type, a date type, and so on. Um, when you're running regex queries, uh, it's best to run it against the raw, unfiltered, unanalyzed data. So you can see here, for example, that the message uh, in this document will be yeah internal. So it's all uppercase uh, letters that match this regex query. That wouldn't work if you didn't use the keyword. Uh, suffix. So whenever you're running regex, make sure that you uh, use the keyword suffix. This goes for range queries as well, if you want to put the numeric suffix on there and so on. Um, all of this is available in the CoreLogix documentation, so I strongly recommend that you go and read that after watching this video. That's just going to mean you have all of the information that you need to be super successful with the CoreLogix platform. Of course, you don't need to run a full-blown query. You could run, for example, something like this. Um, and that will go and query all the logs that contain the word 500, which as you can see are mostly uh, error and critical because 500 is usually something has gone wrong. Um, so you don't, if you know that like a certain token appears in the, t in the letter, you don't even need to write the query, just write the value that you're interested in and let CoreLogix uh, do the rest. So um, you'll also notice as well that as you start to type, you get this really, really nice uh, autocomplete. It's super powerful. So for example, if I want to start typing Kubernetes, I start getting this really, really lovely breakdown of all the different values that are available here. I can run Kubernetes container.name, for example, and it will automatically tell me what the common values are. So this is something that only CoreLogix offers, um, but it enables you to discover your data in a much more effective way. So if you um, don't quite know the values, make sure you leverage the autocomplete there because it's super powerful, it's super efficient, um, and it will mean that you don't have to go searching around your logs. CoreLogix will just tell you what the different values are that are available. And we, we, we track the schemas dynamically, so as new data comes in, the autocomplete will uh, update for you.